Hey, what is happening? It is Rob from Crypto Bobby, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about something that drove me absolutely nuts, and that's EBTC. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell is EBTC? Uh, and if you are thinking that, that's probably a pretty good question because it's the dumbest thing that's happened in cryptocurrency uh, in a hot minute. So I want to hop into what EBTC is, and then I also want to talk a little bit about China, uh, Chinese regulations, because there could be a there could be some positive news finally on the front of Chinese regulation that could potentially lead to a nice little bit of a bull run here. Uh, so. I'm keeping an eye on that. Uh, if you are new to the channel, my name is Rob from Crypto Bobby. I don't usually come to you in the back of my car, but I'm on the road right now, so it is what it is, and this is kind of the easiest place for me to set up a camera and shoot. I'll flip it around to the front later so you can see the beautiful front seat of my car, but for right now, we're coming to the back seat, so it is what it is. Sorry about that, guys. Outside of that, though, you know, I want to talk to you today about EBTC, and you're probably thinking too, like I said, what is EBTC? Uh, and EBTC is Ethereum Bitcoin, essentially. <laughs> it is a ERC-20 token version of Bitcoin. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do I need a ERC-20 token version of Bitcoin when I can just buy Bitcoin? And that's a good question, and there really isn't a very good answer for you. So. There are three specific things that EBTC mentions that you know talk about um, you know talk about the reason why you should choose EBTC over anything else. And the first thing is is speed. Um, EBTC is is faster than than Bitcoin. Okay, sounds great. EBTC is faster, but isn't Litecoin? Isn't Ethereum? Then you say, okay, um, EBTC has better transaction fees than Bitcoin. Okay. Doesn't Litecoin have better transaction fees than Bitcoin? Doesn't Ethereum have better transaction fees than Bitcoin? Hmm. That's strange. Uh, okay, and the last thing, you know, and you're like, all right, well, maybe the last thing, maybe the third thing is really the saving grace. Uh, EBTC allows for smart contracts. Wow, smart contracts. Hmm. Doesn't Ethereum allow for smart contracts? So then why do I need EBTC? Oh shit, you don't? Oh, okay, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's just, you literally don't need it at all and it's the dumbest idea ever. Um, and not only adding to the fact, pretty much the only similarity to Bitcoin in terms of this ERC-20 token, the only similarity really that comes to my head is the fact that apparently there's only a $21 million supply of, or not million dollar supply, excuse me, a 21 million uh, EBTC supply like Bitcoin. However, that was airdropped on day one, so nothing like Bitcoin. Uh, and the, the creator of EBTC was keeping like something like 5% of them to further network development to further network development and line my pockets with a Lamborghini. Okay, that works. Now, you wanna, you wanna make some money, do you do you, I'll do me, that is, that's perfectly normal, I'm not gonna fault that, but adding to that, the EBTC smart contract was, apparently nobody really evaluated it. Um, somebody took five minutes to evaluate the EBT smart, e EBTC smart contract, which apparently had a flaw in it that allows for, or maybe, you know, maybe an accidental flaw or maybe an intentional flaw, but it apparently had a flaw in it that allows for uh, an unlimited token supply. So while you think, oh wow, you know, this is exactly like Bitcoin, it has 21 million uh, coin supply. No, it doesn't. Smart contract's wrong. So what's the logical conclusion here? Well. I would say EBTC is like taking a hamburger, which is Bitcoin, and a hot dog, which is Ethereum, and throwing them together, and then calling it a, a hot burger, something like that. It's literally, it makes them out about as much sense as me taking a hot dog and throwing it into a hamburger bun, uh, and then you have, you know, one freaking hot dog in the middle around a bunch of freaking bread, or on the other side, you're trying to cram in a bunch of hamburger meat into a, you know, into a hot dog roll, and it's overflowing everywhere. It's literally the dumbest thing on the damn planet. Like, the dumbest. And there were people out there, granted the price spiked like 300 something percent because it, people were shilling it and people were talking about it, but Jesus people, like, 
do a little bit of research on a cryptocurrency before you buy it. Like, you know what, if you made 300% and if you made some money, good on you because profit's profit. Um, but don't come in here and try and tell me that EBTC is the next great big thing because it's the ideal combination of Ethereum and Bitcoin. There are literally like 70,000 combinations now of Ethereum and Bitcoin. They just weren't named that. What's <laughs> What has which what has cheaper transaction fees and uh, is faster than than Bitcoin? Uh, okay, well that's Litecoin. We already have one of those, and that's like six years old. What has smart contracts? Uh, the thing that ERC twenty tokens are launched on. Holy crap, people! Just do some research and like it. Literally amazed me that there were somewhat respected people in the you know in the crypto space that were actually talking about ebtc as if it was some type of like good idea or like you know good cryptocurrency that you should put your money behind um literally blows my mind i i i can't even i can't even speak right now because i'm just like what the hell are people thinking in this space stop buying shit coins so that's the end of my EBTC high horse and rant because I just think it's like literally the dumbest thing on the planet. Uh, and like I said, if you want to make profit or if you made profit off it already, then great. But I, I'm profits. I may, maybe people are just going to continue to throw money into it, but I, I wouldn't touch EBTC with the 10 foot freaking pole. Um, so that's that's my thought process there. Now outside of that, uh, you know, outside of that, the one thing that I'll definitely say too is one of the topics I wanted to discuss today was was China. And obviously China had a massive impact on the price of uh, Bitcoin and the price of Ethereum on the entire cryptocurrency market when they first came out and banned uh, ICOs. And then they went so far as to pretty much ban all cryptocurrency exchanges, um, which has really just shot the volume in China off a freaking, uh, you know, off a freaking cliff. But there were always kind of two just I feel like there were always kind of two distinct scenarios that could come out of this. Number one, China is just never going to let anything happen with crypto again, um, or they were going to just tightly, tightly restrict these exchanges to make it um, so that China has their finger all over any type of fiat to, to cryptocurrency that happens in their country. And apparently now that China has banned these cryptocurrency exchanges or take, you know, a lot of them have gone offline like BTC China, uh, which is BTCC or OKCoin and Huobi have until the end of the month to shut down. A lot of people are now using over the counter trading OTC trading, uh, or they are also using, um, they're also using something like local Bitcoins where they're just meeting up in a dark alley or probably in like a coffee shop or in a restaurant or something like that. And they're exchanging cryptocurrency for, for fiat. And they're doing it in that manner, which is completely skirting all regulations. So China's realizing that now, oh shit, before with Bitcoin and before with these exchanges, you know, at least OKCoin, okay at least Huobi, at least BTCC had some level of KYC, know your customer, had some level of AML, which is anti-money laundering. There isn't any anti-money laundering for, you know, local Bitcoins or for me to, you know, shoot you a chat on telegram or something like that and say hey i want to buy a thousand dollars worth of bitcoin or a thousand yuan worth of bitcoin or whatever it is um you know meet me at meet me at the starbucks and we'll we'll flip that over and and we'll you know we'll do that china has no control over it there so i think they're starting to freak out a little bit that like they have even less control about things now that they are now that they've taken that they have forced a lot of this action underground so there's some rumors now, There's and again, it's rumors, but there's some rumors now that China has essentially come out and said, uh, or China people in the Chinese government are working on establishing a new stricter set of KYC and AML regulations that are gonna have to be leveraged by these exchanges. And that would be able to bring those exchanges really back online to you know resume trading yuan to, to Bitcoin, yuan to ETH, to you know, crypto to crypto, blah, 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 blah. So that would be, I think, a huge step. Obviously, that'd be a big deal for a lot of Chinese citizens. I, I don't personally know many. I'm in the U.S., but that'd be a big deal for a lot of Chinese citizens because they could, again, not have to worry about going underground and doing all this kind of, not shady stuff, but you know, doing things that should be a lot easier than the government is making, them, uh, making it be for them. So 
if and when this happens, which apparently some people are saying could happen as soon as maybe announced as soon as mid to late October, I think that's going to really set up crypto for a nice, nice, nice bull run. Um, granted, we're already kind of still in the midst of, you know, what you could consider a pretty positive market. But if if China comes out and regulates things to a, you know, to a good degree, I think that's going to be a really strong positive thing for for crypto. And it's going to I think ease a lot of the if like if China allows this shit to go down, then then <laughs> are really other countries going to ban it? So who knows what will happen there? Again, this is more rumors and and this crypto stuff is still not really enabled within China at this point in time. But definitely something that I would you know that I would keep an eye on uh, because, like I said, I think it could have a very positive impact on the prices of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some of those cryptos, uh, and maybe some of the other ones like Neo, Qtum that are kind of more of the Asia based or, you know, however anybody, anybody wants to really refer to them or market to them as. So I'm keeping an eye on China news, especially in the coming weeks to see how things continue to develop there for, you know, for that market and if regulation could move back in the favor of cryptocurrency. So definitely keep an eye out on that. And just summarizing things today, you know, for me personally, don't what I would recommend is just always do full research on cryptocurrencies. Even if a thousand people are saying, telling you EBTC is the best idea in the world and it's so smart and it's so ingenious, like do a little bit of research and it takes five seconds to find out that, um, you know, that it's probably not the biggest innovation ever. And it's literally just a shit coin wrapped in an ERC 20 token. And to that point as well, and I'm probably going to save this for another video, but smart contracts, smart contracts, smart contracts. So everybody likes to talk about decentralization now and how much better decentralization is than everything else that's centralized. You know, centralized certain, certainly has its issues in terms of, you know, single points of failure. You know, you have the Equifax hack, you have so many different hacks and all that type of thing. Um, decentralization has the problem with smart contracts. There are apparently not that many good smart contract, uh, you know, programmers and engineers nowadays because Rather than with centralization where you have one single point of failure um, on like an internal system or with one individual, with a lot of these decentralized systems, they're relying on smart contracts. And if the smart contracts are not programmed properly, if they're not properly secured, or if they're maliciously done and nobody takes the, the five seconds of time to actually read through that smart contract and determine what exactly it is that it's doing, then you can be in trouble. And even with EBTC, apparently that it now has an unlimited supply of EBTC where the initial where the initial thing was supposed to be that it was only for, um, you know, only really done for 21 million, uh, supply of 21 million. That's definitely something you want to keep an eye on. So smart contracts, I'm going to make another video on that in the near future, but definitely look into smart contracts. You, you don't have to be an engineer, um, but understand that not all smart contracts are ironclad or probably the majority aren't and a lot of them aren't secure so you want to do your due diligence on that as well and then keep an eye on china and the chinese regulation i don't think things are necessarily going to get worse i think they're probably only going to get better so keep an eye on on that and if things can get better from china you know We'll see how it goes. But until next time, my name is Rob from Crypto Bobby. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me in the back seat of the the whip. And sorry for any of the you know the background noise and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, we're literally sitting in the Starbucks parking lot on the side of on the side of a highway right now. So um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. But again, it is Rob from Crypto Bobby. Thank you again so much for your time. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, signing out.